All the lights up, just for a second, so I can see your faces. So I want to take a second and, uh, and tell you guys a little bit about the history of Motley Crue and uh, maybe, maybe a couple lessons along the way that we all learned. And uh, most importantly, I wanted to point out that you guys would not be here tonight and we would not be here tonight if any part of the story that I'm about to tell you didn't actually happen exactly the way I'm going to tell you. So, are you ready? Let's start off by everybody sitting down together. I'm going to do it with you. Go on, you can do it. Okay. So, people come up to me all the time, and they have, uh, for most of my life, and they always say this thing. And uh, in Motley Crue, in our world, it is not true. People will say, hey, Nikki, you know, uh, everything happens for a reason. And I always say, you know what? That's fucking bullshit. Things happen in life because you make a fucking decision to do something. I'm here tonight, and we made a decision along the way to form this band. So I'm going to back up to late 1980, early 1981, and I was a struggling musician in Los Angeles, California. And for me, my dream had pretty much come true. I got on a Greyhound bus in Jerome, Idaho, and took it all the way to Hollywood, California. And all I wanted to do was be in a band. And I was in a band, I was in band rehearsal, and you know, life couldn't be much better at that moment. And for some reason, I have no idea, I made a decision. I looked over at my band, and I said, I don't know why, but I quit. And they, they were probably happy. <laughs> but the fact is, I made a decision to do something different in my life. And as I was walking home, I was thinking to myself, well, you don't have a band, you don't have any money, you don't have a job, you don't have a car. But I had this in the back of my head, and that is that there has to be three other guys in Los Angeles, California, that think like I think, that wants to reach into the heart of the music industry and work his fucking heart out and change his fucking heart. I had no idea where those motherfuckers were. And for no apparent reason, on a Thursday night, I decided to hitch a ride to Hollywood, California, to Santa Monica Boulevard, to the Starwood Club, and I walked through the back door, and there was a drummer on that stage. He was beating the shit out of the drums. Skinniest motherfucker I've ever seen in my life. Do you know who that was? and I had a rum and coke, and we sit on the floor together, and at that moment, I know his band was looking at me, and they were thinking, that motherfucker with the weird hair is trying to steal our drummer. And you know what? They were fucking right. So me and Tony talked about something, man. We talked about, at that moment, in our life, we fucking loved heavy fucking metal. Something else that was very important and would be important to the fabric of Motley Crue, and is that we also love fucking punk rock. And we love the bands that came out of the 70s, like Aerosmith and Black Sabbath. So I get the idea. Tommy made a decision and he quit his band. So we got together at this little house, this girl's house I was living at, and we set up bass and drums. That's all we had, bass and drums. And we had these songs. We had 
live wire and too fast for run and uh, on with the show and public enemy number one. I, I forget, man. That was so many fucking drinks ago. <laughs> but the thing is, fucking magic was happening right fucking there. Oh, yeah. And we knew oh, that we needed to do something very fucking important. We needed to make a really big decision. So you know what we did? We went to fucking 7 Eleven to buy some beer. God we did because there was a magazine called the Recycler Magazine sitting on the counter and we picked it up and it said, guitar player available, loud, rude, aggressive, motherfucker, only call me if you're serious. And right there was the singer and Tommy said, I know a guy except for he's in another band and Nick Bars looked at us and said, dude, let's go check him out and if he's good, we'll steal his ass. So we went back on a Tuesday night to the Starwood in Hollywood, California and there he was. He walked out. He had white leather pants on, a white fucking leather jacket, bleached white hair and he was leaning into the microphone and he was singing some fucking cheap trick and the three of us looked at each other and we went, that's our fucking guy. You know who that is? That's all the money we had. We went to Burbank, California in a rehearsal space. And this is exactly how it happened. And by the way, if it didn't work, you wouldn't be here right now. I don't know where you would be. Maybe you'd be in a Mount Sons concert or something. But you definitely wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. This is how it happened. I handed Vince the lyrics to Livewire. And he looked at them and he goes, I've got this. Nick picked up his guitar, turned up his amp, Tommy jumped on the drums, started smashing the shit out of those motherfuckers. I picked up his face, and at that exact moment, it was January 17th, 1981, not the crew was born. <laughs> Anybody tries to uh, give you a hard time about your decisions, tell them to go fuck themselves and trust your fucking ass. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. And remember these last words, motherfuckers. This is not goodbye, this is not farewell, because our music is gonna haunt you till the day that you fucking die.